It's Friday Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ha! Feedback Friday. That, that felt weird. I don't know why. Maybe because I was out in public this week. Uh, I went to this really, really interesting uh, talk on VR and, and uh, haptic motors. I went to a haptic motor demo. Um, it was really cool. Thanks, Momo. Um, but it meant venturing out of the house and... Um, navigating downtown and the the event was absolutely absolutely lovely getting there fucking nightmare <laughs> so if i seem a little hmm, this week it's because i'm still coming down from downtown Toronto driving and parking finding parking oh god anyway you guys don't care about this um i am gonna do the help support this channel thing we are behind for the first time on a Friday with the coffee, the Leanna Care sessions, um, just as I've actually had to add a few people. So you know what's coming. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or one time coffee uh, donation. Buy a Leanna Care session for somebody who can use it and can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. All right, so there we go. Feedback Friday. This is an interesting one. I did an experiment with um, uh, Manly Mondays, not putting men in the title, uh, not putting male expendability, that that flashpoint Google search term in it. And of course, the YouTube algorithm hated it. But I stand by that because it gave people a safe space to talk. I then changed it put men in it YouTube didn't like the algorithm any better but the type of comments that started attracting it well um this this is the challenge unfortunately there is a hostility to talking about issues that primarily affect men uh and talking about people like people instead of different alien species but i'm gonna keep doing it because you guys know i don't i don't care about that kind of stuff it was just interesting to experiment with it this is part of why i do these feedback sessions to report back um there will be exciting news coming next week um about an expansion to things but that will be next week uh patrons patrons will get it first uh, patrons actually got it yesterday so uh yeah if you want to you want sneak peek? and there is going to be like special participation for patrons in this this new initiative so uh, super excited i'm stoked let's get to your comments though um starting with uh male expendability and how to feel less expendable um i struggle to express with words how lame it feels as a guy to have this quiet implied expectation to just deal with my feelings like i suffer from self-esteem issues for the sake of brevity i'll just say i had a complicated relationship with my father and I go through life just assuming that I'm annoying or not a great worker or generally just tolerated solely because I don't really get compliments or unsolicited emotional support in my day to day life. And it feels like asking for those things completely invalidates them because now I'm begging for it, showing weakness, getting well-meaning but insincere praise like unconditional self-confidence. So that third party verification is just an emperor's new clothes situation waiting to happen. Yeah, I see your point, commenter. Um, it is sort of a catch 22 isn't it? Um, I don't think that, I mean, first of all, thank you for your bravery in expressing that, that couldn't have been easy based on, you know, what you say you're going through. And even in a text comment, um, that takes guts. Um, I don't know if you consider that a compliment or just feedback. I don't know, but this is why I try to be I try to be positive and when somebody like actively positive, like sincerely positive, not everything's great. No. Um, but yeah, it is a weird double-edged sword that stating needs is, is a weird thing. We're not good at it as a culture. And especially if you've got a complicated relationship with a parent those permission structures just, um, you know, because I'm a creative and we sort of understand and train um, positive feedback because we know everybody gets bad reviews from time to time. So we sort of bolster that. Um, I don't know if how those structures help 
um, outside of, of theater. Uh, but what, you know, what you're saying is real. I, I totally get it. And I think I'd rather validate that and, you know, say thank you for contributing. And that took guts. Um, and your comment itself, um, you know, um, that mattered. That had meaning. I don't know if that helps. Uh, you were not annoying. You were very honest and poignant. And um, this comment was great work. Um, I don't know if that helps a little bit. I don't know if that's going to start something. But yeah, it took guts to be that honest. So greatly appreciate it. Uh, another comment. What if setting a boundary increases the abuse? Good question. That's why it's abuse. Um setting the boundary yeah it can it can cause a flare-up but i don't see it as increasing the abuse because it, to me mindset of the person being abused that suggests you did something to deserve it and that's part of the dynamic of the abuse right you didn't you didn't cause the abuse you didn't increase the abuse by setting a boundary the reason somebody had a bad reaction to the boundary um and and that's poorly worded a temporary bad reaction is not the same as the abuse increasing. Uh, some people can get caught off guard. When you're learning to set boundaries, you don't necessarily do it in 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 the way that it's best received. And that, that's not any slight. It takes practice. But if actual abuse actually gets worse, yeah, because it's abusive. Um, it's abuse. And, you know, the textbook response is get yourself out of that situation. That is not always possible but sometimes it does help um as you know somebody who suffered from a lot of workplace abuse again creative sometimes just acknowledging to yourself that this is abuse this is abusive and and you know putting that in its correct place in its own head and in its own head in in your head in my head um that's on them, not you. You did nothing to, no one ever does anything to cause abusive beha behavior. Mere anger is not abuse. Mere frustration is not abuse. If people use anger and frustration or annoyance or anything like that to justify abuse, that is because they are abusive. I know that's not a great answer, but it's the best one I can give because yeah, abuse is abuse and it's real. And, you know, there will be stuff on male victims of abuse because of the, the Johnny Depp stuff. Um, I will talk about that probably next week. I was I was going to do dating stuff because it's so popular. But, you know, with the Johnny Depp thing, I think it's time uh, anyway. But yeah, good question. Um, another comment. It's important to remember that when setting your boundaries, you may feel like a jerk for doing so at first. But that's because you aren't used to doing it and you're stepping out of your comfort zone. If you're dealing with a toxic person and decide you need to cut off contact for a while, they're probably going to tell you and other people that you're being mean to them and you might be tempted to believe them. But standing up for yourself in a healthy way is not mean. If you can, find someone whose opinion you trust and get their assessment. Sometimes what your brain considers normal is not a good benchmark, especially if it's keeping you in misery. Wow, commenter, do you want to come do my job? Do you want to do a fill-in? That was really great. I'm just going to leave that there because that was a, a really good piece of feedback and maybe it'll it'll uh inform the previous commenter of something that was really really good top notch um uh, another commenter toxic masculinity is the opposite of helpful because it puts the blame for the problem on the people that struggle with the problem instead of the ones that created it that's pull yourself up by your bootstraps re rhetoric feminist style um that it, uh, this is the feedback I've gotten about toxic masculinity and it's good for me to hear this because I was, you know, exposed to the concept in women's studies in the 90s. Um, and so that was not what it was taught to mean. It is important to be aware of how when these terms break containment from academia, how the outside world sees it. And, you know, I, I hear that a lot about what people take, that, that they're not hearing a toxic form of masculinity. They are hearing masculinity is inherently toxic. That's important to understand. 
uh, because we don't make anything better when people feel blamed. And it doesn't matter if the intent is to blame or not. If that's the way something's coming across, that matters. That's valid. And, you know, it's this is why I've started doing this content um, to make people feel less that way. Right. So, OK, good feedback. Um, so while the feeling of disposability in the workplace is definitely real, I think that it's swelling up in another aspect of life that arguably hurts more, dating, love, and marriage. From everything I can tell, it looks like dating is swinging more utilitarian for modern women. How many stories have you seen of women cheating on or leaving their men because they thought they could do better? How many stories of men getting cleaned out mentally, emotionally, and financially by women they never raised a hand to? And how often do modern women justify it all because it wasn't good enough? I've got a friend who's been suffering through that all that since I stumbled upon this channel, and it's scaring the shit out of me. I don't know what the true common commonality of this is, but boy, is that image the world that's been presenting to me. They say there's plenty of fish in the sea, but what do my, why do my options all look like sharks? Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass or I'm just being paranoid, but that's where the disposability hits me most, that I'm just a tool for a woman's benefit until I'm found wanting. And I got to be very careful about statistics here because it is true that the rates of female infidelity and, and whatnot, we're in weird times that way because yes, more women working, basically the argument is more women working, more women working outside the home gives women more opportunities to cheat on men. Whereas before men had more opportunities and it's just an opportunities game. But there also is the reality that surveys have consistently shown that and this is, I am not saying this isn't sexist as hell. This is just the data, right? That men prefer women who make slightly less money and are slightly less qualified, educated, talented, so on and so forth. Women prefer men who make more money or more successful, so on and so forth. Um, this is something I have to remind myself of. I'm, I'm not, uh, this is something that bothers me a lot, but you know weak gender identity, non-conforming, all that stuff. So I, you know, I have to remind me myself of the stuff, this is real. And this is when I go, this isn't about what I'd want. This is about what I think. This is about the realities of the data we have, right? And there is an increase. That being said, like everything, there are good people of all genders. There are shitty people of all genders. This is not a man thing. This is not a woman thing. This is not a non-binary thing. This is a people thing. Are there shitty people out there? Are there, you know, she take my money when I'm in need types. Yeah, sure, they're out there. Yeah, she's a trifling. I love that part. That's not part. That's, that's a sample. Love that part. Anyway, say she a gold digger way under town now i want to do a video of uh sjw singing that song because it'd just be so wrong and terrible uh anyway I'm, I'm getting distracted because this is a this is an uncomfortable thing right i don't want people to give up and think the whole world is terrible um because of this i am just being honest about the statistics now what is going on here as well is is mean world syndrome when you see stuff in in media and then you see you know this one thing this this terrible thing that's happening to someone close to you it's really easy to believe the whole world is like that and terrible and awful and that's not so and i it's probably not comforting to say you know some men are jerks some men are great some women are jerks some women are great some non-binary people are jerks some non-binary people are great that, that doesn't help navigate the good people from the bad people, we cannot do that in a single comment feedback section. There will be stuff in, uh, hopefully, the, so, uh, talking about, you know, abused men and, and dating and all that stuff. There will be content in the coming weeks that hopefully helps with this because it's a big, big, big topic, right? Okay. Um, now, this last comment, this was one that came in after I changed the name. And I am going to leave this out or I am not going to comment on this. I want you to consider for yourself, do you believe at face value what the commenter is saying here? Okay. 
Because because this comments like this are why I started doing these segments. And this may sound really weird because it's not very nice. But I deeply feel for this person, which is kind of ironic because it starts with who cares about feelings? I am expendable. How I feel is completely pointless. I can feel 10 feet tall, but I'm not. I can feel important, but I'm not. I am a human do doing, not a human being. Just how it is. Worry about that which you can change. Relax about what you can't. It is real. The world doesn't care if I live or die. You can be loved by everyone around you. It doesn't change the fact that society as a whole doesn't care if I live or die. If you, a woman, sat down on the side of a street and started crying, I bet someone will stop and check on you. I, a man, do the same thing. If I'm lucky, I will be ignored. If I am unlucky, I will be arrested. Yes, that happened. I started crying and the police picked me up because someone was scared a man was crying and called them. I had to go to a mental hospital and get cleared to be released. People care about women because they are women, period. They don't care about men, period. You are the one who has a problem with it. I'm good with it. I would always prefer to be judged by my actions than by my sex organs. I'm just fine being considered expendable. I fight for my own success and I earn what is mine. I will leave it up to you whether you believe this commenter that they do not care, they are fine with it, they are good with it, they feel like they're judged by their actions and yet are completely expendable and yet they earn what is theirs. And that I'm the one with the problem, I will, I will leave that up to you to decide whether you believe this person. I just personally hope, I hope for better than this person. To me, there's a lot of pain in that statement and I'm gonna choose to respond to that pain and validate that pain instead of the content of that comment. Cause uh, I don't tend to get judged just by my sex organs. Just saying. But I'm glad that you did comment or I'm glad that you judged me by my sex organs. That great it makes me feel a little bit more like a woman today. Don't get that often. Uh, that's a song. Man, I feel like a woman. Do, do, do. Anyway, moving on. Now we're getting on to the, the words that have no meanings. And this was overall fun. I enjoyed it. It was also a bit of a test because, oh, Lord, it, it just reminded me of what a fucking sinking pit the term Mary Sue is. But more on that in a bit. Uh, I think it was one comment that I thought was really interesting is that a commenter that said it wasn't that the words have no meanings. It's the word have too much meaning, too many implications imbued by fanatics of various stripes. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Coming at the whole thing from a different, that's probably more accurate too much instead of not enough. Um, ultimately in the wash, it, it all adds up to the same thing because they said definitely avoid using them if you want to make serious points, but people who do use them usually have some emotionally charged concept in mind. Exactly. Right. Um, another person did a whole breakdown of at least this next commenter acknowledged the original definition of the Mary Sue. Bless, because there's a lot of people that refuse to do that. Uh, they said, like people, language involves to be bet to better fit its environment for better or for worse, the case may be. Mary Sue, for example, did at one point refer to the characters interacting with the main cast of Star Trek and ultimately would save the day when the main cast could not. Rather mundane definition, the original concept for Mary Sue is I know, but that it... it is it right there? The thing, though, is that the context of the Mary Sue was generally about identifying a badly written character, and people progressively kept refining the definition for that purpose instead. And they, they went on talking about roguelike. So you can go and read the, the comments um, with that. Um, yes, but we don't need a, a new term for badly written character. And that's my issue with the whole Mary Sue thing. A badly written character is a badly written character. We can talk about a badly written character and why they're badly written. The problem with the term Mary Sue is 90% of fights over this thing are fights of definition. And when people can't get a common definition of a term, um, it's not very useful. I mean, my struggle with the whole thing is that Mary, it's Mary Sue fan fiction. That was the, the original term. So when a um like one of the worst opinion in my opinion mary susan a really long time is sylvie on loki 
the Disney Plus thing. She totally just the whole gravity of that show shifts. She's not that cool. And yet, oh, she's inexplicably better and older and more powerful and everything like that than he is. And he, she fucking punks him in his own show. I don't know why they did it, but I don't consider her a Mary Sue because she's a retelling of Enchantress from Marvel Comics. She's not a fan fiction character. And this is where we get into this stuff of um, is like continuous storytelling in comic books and stuff like that. It is not um, it is not fan fiction. It is official fiction. Even though some of it is the quality of bad fan fiction, it is not in fact fan fiction. It is official canon fiction. And this is where I'm like, can we just call bad writing bad writing, please? And not put the additional stuff on it. It's so much more productive. So, but this was a good experiment and I liked it. So please give me suggestions for other things I should open up to Twitter and kind of brainstorm or as they say now crowdsource um responses for this because i they're still pouring in like it's in the comment section introvert extrovert was one feminism was another and i'm running out of time on this video but oh man maybe that'll be maybe that'll be next week's deconstruction of feminism tell me what feminism means to you maybe that what do you think about that for next week too charged i don't know i've had too much coffee i'm feeling like a party uh so Wellness Wednesday, when we talked about reactants, um, one person said that, yeah, the comment section I was talking about was fucked up. Yeah, it was fucked up. That's why it was informative. Um, but thank you, commenter, for saying it was it was fucked up. You know, they 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 commented on the fact that one person was saying they were glad I don't have children. And this guy said, I may disagree with you, but I believe com I believe completely children are safe with you. Um this is I one thing I think we will disagree on. People make decisions emotionally and justify them rationally. No, I completely agree with you on that one, dude. Like totally. Yeah. It is emotion happens faster than cognitive thought. Most people do make decisions completely emotionally. And then they uh Jonathan hates the righteous mind talks about that that emotional that sorry, that logical backfill to the emotional choice. Instead of using cognition to question your original response, they just prop it up after the fact. Um, the same commenter said, and I, I appreciate um, this this moment because it is true. It, it, it is, I think, what makes my content useful, but also what makes my content infuriating to some people. Um, the problem with Americans and Canadian news is that we don't understand Canadian norms. Most Americans don't understand that most Western nations don't have the same rights as we have. We certainly don't have the same rights structure as you have. The thing about America is that there's this idea of freedom and then the reality of what freedoms Americans may or may not have. And in practice, because of things like RICO laws and the war on drugs, the U.S. actually, in practice, Americans have fewer freedoms than um, the, the, you know, the places like Canada. People freak out about, oh, free speech is dead in Canada and all that stuff. But in practice, when, when we buy, you know, a decongestant, at the pharmacy it is not tracked we we deal with things like methamphetamines differently um we we don't turn our country into a surveillance state but that's partially because we have healthcare systems and people can actually seek out help for things like that more easily um and and that is that is a huge 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 disconnect it's no one's fault uh, and, and that's part of why I think it's useful because, uh, yeah, it's good to get different perspectives and, and, you know, to, to be aware, wait, different country, different things. I think we can all sort of learn from each other and recognize that there is no one viewpoint on the world, right? Well, okay. Momo. Yes, Momo. You can just see his bum. Here's his tail. Um, Momo is is going in. And that's it for Feedback Friday this week. Um, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Get those coffee things in if you can. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Pay for Leanna Care session for somebody who can use it but can't afford it. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.